busy day for you both. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. It's been a great day. We've been having some great conversations. Good, good. So first things first, Rashid, I, I, I was trying to describe this film and, you know, I, I was trying to come up with my own synopsis and every time I tried writing my own synopsis, I, it failed. So I would love you to actually describe, describe it in your words because in my mind, it's kind of like this hybrid documentary fictionalization um, of your life? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll go first and let Tevin, Tevin does a great job at this. Uh, but it is a plus, it's, it's an amalgamation of different genres merged together, just our own genre, but it's uh, loosely based off my, most of the stories take place, but it's loosely based off my uh, true story when I was homeless living in my car. Uh, dating a girl, I lived two cars behind me while trying to moonlight as a ride share driver would be the basic log line of the movie. But yeah, it's a mixed genre. It's no genre. I don't think it has no specific genre. Yeah, I think it's his own new genre, but that's just my take on it. Yeah, I would say that it's a. I mean, it's a film about the grind of stand-up comedy that people don't usually see. It's a film about, <clears throat> you know, art, being an artist, not giving up in your dreams, even though there's constant struggle and setbacks and roadblocks to get in your path. And hopefully it inspires people to keep going, even when it gets difficult. So, I mean, that's that's what I would say the film is about, ultimately. Yeah, I, yeah I'd take either of those if it was like, a, if I was on iTunes and scrolling through movies and uh, looking through description, I'd, I'd take either one of those. But yeah, um, I think either is a good description. But I want to talk a little bit about the making of this film because um i mean it, it's kind of unique because um kind of like a lot of slam dance 2024 uh films were uh for those who don't know it it uh, premiered at slam dance this year but yeah just walk me through the uh making of this film from you know concept phase to festival planning uh to now i know that's a big uh window yeah. to cover probably mm -hmm. like three, three years or something like that but so, yeah, no, it, it's been a wild ride. And actually, so what happened is spring of last year, Rashid and I were putting together a film and we started to go, go out to casting and playing that whole like circle of trying to get casting and money attached, you know, that that you, you never know how you're going to break into it. Yeah. Um, but we were reaching out to cast. We were starting to reach out to cast. And then the uh, uh, rumor of the SAG strike came out and things quickly just kind of shut down. I believe it was sometime in early June and it had been a couple of weeks and we realized we, we were not going to get anywhere with that project um, in the foreseeable future. And both of us, and I, you know, both of us just like, well, what are we going to do next? We don't want to sit around all summer. Like we got, we got to, we got to make something, we got to do something and just tired of waiting for somebody else's permission to do it. So we're like, you know what, we're just going to, we're going to do it ourselves and we'll see what happens. So uh, I remember I was lying in bed one night thinking about all of that. And I remembered a concept that Rashid had pitched me a couple of years before. He wanted to do a web series about based on his experience when he first lived in LA about this guy living in his car and dating a girl lived two cars behind him. And I remember that, that idea. And I was like, okay, let's make it a movie. Let's make it a story about his like, with stand up and include stand up in it and be about like that whole aspect as well. And, you know, it's like, and, and do it with like a documentary approach so that we can, you know, pull it off with very limited resources. Um, as well as the fact that I had actually been wanting to experiment with that for a while. And so this story just seemed like the perfect, uh, story to try that experiment with. And I called him up the next day to pitch that to him. And he was like, dude, I, he was like, dude, I was literally telling someone about that idea last night and we did the calculations and we were both thinking about it at the exact same time. And so we we're basically like, well, the universe has spoken and we got to do this. Yeah. And that was, yeah, that was, so that was early June. And so I, I believe it was like a day or two later, we sat down and we just wrote the script mm -hmm. out, which was really just more of an outline of all the scenes we were going to have in the film. And we set ourselves a shoot date, July <laughs> and two weeks later somehow managed to like pull it all together and we started shooting and we shot for a total of seven days just 
with that with zero crew uh, i even actually ended up recording the audio which is not yeah. an experience i would i would like to do again but but there was also something very freeing about having no crew because pretty much i could look anywhere on set and i would never run into anything that wasn't supposed to be seen you know so it's just rashid and i and whoever else was the talent and there was something very freeing about that and i think that also just lent to the the feeling of actually being there with the story and the characters as it's happening because we also shot every scene as one take or nearly every scene as one take um and i was like never gonna shoot coverage gonna edit it like it was captured in real time um documentary style but yeah so we did that and also because of the way we shot it it didn't really take that long in post because the edit was really just laying it all out trimming it up arranging it and you know doing a few creative things in post and so it really just it just came together and i don't believe either of us really had a clear idea of our our plan of what we were going to do going in but once we had finished the edit i think we both sort of were starting to feel like we maybe had something and then we had a test screening with the cast and friends and crew and it went very well there was like a really good response there was a lot of laugh and i remember i remember there was a certain point in it uh where people actually kind of (laughs) cheered so we decided that we should submit the festival so that was in i believe in like late august early september we started submitting to festivals and we we only submitted Pretty to a much, couple of festivals. <laughs> yeah, we like had we had no money, so we were like, all right, we're just gonna hit the big ones and see what happens and then go from yeah. there. And then we got a notification from Slam Dance in like I believe it was like November that we got in. Yeah, I mean, and that was a very surreal moment because it really it just felt like basically what we were saying in the film actually happened through the process of making it if if you you know so it, it was very meta it was very yeah that makes sense um, and then from there after slam dance we started getting invited to other festivals and then picked up several awards uh and just last week we signed a distribution deal and on friday we are premiering at the lamley in north hollywood and so yeah it's it's been like a crazy year <laughs> Yeah. Um, to say the least, but we're both very excited and just honestly just can't wait to like roll this into making the next next film. Yeah. So y- y- you gave me four very uh, n- nice points to jump off of uh, because you you know you said you um, um, finished filming what July first. So we started filming, I believe, July first, and finished like on the seventh or eighth. It was on the eighth. Eighth was on we, we may have actually started on the second. I think we may have been delayed by like one day or something from our our plan. But so the reason I mentioned that is I think, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. Um, um, I think the events in the film happen around that same time, about like July fourth weekend. Yeah. No. I mean the the film actually takes place on July fourth. So okay. Uh, we never overtly say that, but there's references to it mm-hmm. and. We set it then because we wanted to shoot that scene with the fireworks uh, when they're going on their date towards the end. And that actually was a crazy uh, story getting that scene, too, because we shot another scene earlier in the day and we were planning to go down to uh, like Venice area where they were going to have a big firework display like over the harbor down there. And Mm -hmm. um, we knew when that was starting, but... Uh, after we'd shot our first scene earlier in the day, I, our actress had to go do some 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 family stuff, and so she was like going to meet us there. Traffic was absolutely insane, and so we were we were headed to meet her at that location, and she was coming from another direction. And as we got closer and closer, we realized there's no way we yeah. were ever going to to get there in time. And so on the fly, like I was in the car, like looking up a location and like figuring out where she was, and like found a, a street like a corner and i was like all right well, so we're just gonna meet there and we're gonna we're gonna shoot what we can get <laughs> and we managed to meet meet up finally and we were right outside this this big apartment building and we could see up on top of it a bunch of people were like hanging out and like well, to watch the fireworks and so we just kind of were like all right we're 
we're going to see if we can get up there. And <laughs> yeah. And it was still, it was very smoggy outside too, but we were managed to still shoot through it. Yeah, it was, it was actually a very smoggy day. So the fireworks were, were not as, uh, as visible. But yeah, I, I, uh, from what little I've been in LA like twice, you start talking about traffic and I already knew where the rest of the story was going from there. <laughs> I, uh, I think the last time I was out there was 2017 for uh, a game awards or PlayStation experience and just getting from Venice, Be not Venice beach, one of the beaches um, to the uh, convention center out there in Anaheim was absolute nightmare. It was like two or three hours. Yeah. If you, if you hit it during rush hour, it's, it, it takes forever. But yeah, I, I um, and then another thing I want to key on in on, because I don't think I've, we've covered this is, um, I want to cover how both of you met. How did how did the two of you meet? What's that story? We met. In, it was oh my god, maybe three four years ago now. Um, is I'd moved. I'd been. I'd moved back to LA. I was gone during the pandemic, and I just moved back to LA and was just trying to meet new people. And we actually met on Bumble Biz. Bumble Biz. It's a business website. So Bumble. you got. You got it. I want you to I want you to put emphasis on it. That was Bumble <laughs> Biz, B I Z. Wasn't no Bumble. I, 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 I like I like to just say Bumble because Rashid like it, it bothers him. But um, yeah. but yeah, no, we weird. met off of that app. <laughs> yeah, he keeps that. what he used to do. He used to tell people we met on Bumble. Like, no, specify <laughs> what kind of Bumble that was. Well, tell it, them what kind of Bumble that was. Bumble Biz. Well, and and now they've broken Bumble off into like three separate apps. Now yeah. there's Bumble for dating, and then Bumble yeah. BFF, and then Bumble yeah, Biz, yeah, yeah. and it's like yeah. So yeah. I I mean honestly, I always had more luck on the biz part of it than the dating part of it. Um, yeah, too. same. But met a lot of interesting people out here actually with that when I first moved back, and so Rashid and I connected off of there, and like met up i think we met up that day and then like i ended up shooting some teaser for a project he was working on the, the following week and then we just became friends and uh one thing led to another and now we have this film awesome oh yeah was that for uh beyond fear for a, i know it's mentioned in the film um oh between forever between forever that sorry oh, no no I, I shot between forever and shit i shot that like a couple years before the pandemic Okay. But uh, we didn't release it to I think 2021. But yeah, I, I shot that. But yeah, that, that that was the whole idea. I'm like, Seven, we already got a plethora of stuff. Like, might as well just kind of uh, just ingratiate everything we have done inside the film because we are our own marketing too. So now somebody gonna go back and watch Between Fair because they saw it. So everything was based off a true story. And then even we referenced East Point in a movie. It's a movie that we were supposed to shoot, but a strike happened. So, yeah. So we just, yeah, so just self branded. The film that he is auditioning for in this movie is the one that got the ground to a halt and caused us to make this this movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried looking it up and I was like, oh, it's an unt untitled East Point project now on IMDb. Because I was trying to like fact check like who who the actual casting director was because of a joke that's made in this movie. It, um, it actually was a woman. But I'm not gonna say her name though, but yeah, yeah, that, that happened for real. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they kicked me out. Uh, they actually did give me a call back, but then they uh, kind of they black bought me. They told me don't come in for a couple of months. Yeah, I, I, I figured that was the uh, diversion of the true story to the uh, to what the film was. Because um, I was like, uh, I don't know about that. But that conversation and, actually did happen. Oh, I'm I'm, oh, I'm sure. Like I, a, a lot of these conversations in the film do feel like conversations i've just had privately you know oh. with other critics or you know uh people in the industry because as soon as you, you start making a joke um i won't spoil what it is but um for those who want to watch it but as soon as you uh, uh you start making the joke in the film i was like oh i know exactly where this is going <laughs> um, but uh speaking of where she uh how, how did you i want to talk about this uh film and how you used it to do two different things. You know, you're talking about your career, obviously, as a stand-up comedian, but also talking about the city of Los Angeles at the same time with um, the rideshare um, scenes and things like that. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear about that. Oh, um, the only 
thing that was not authentically authentic in the movie was me being a ride scare driver. When I moved to LA, they didn't even, they didn't have that in Los Angeles. They didn't have Uber or um or Lyft. They didn't have any of those things. So that was the idea that Tevin had just so we can move the story more, just just more feasibly. Yeah. Because usually I was on a bus or I was walking when these interactions would happen. And or because I would park my car because uh, I didn't have gas money until I got impounded. But most of these interactions happened on a bus or me walking, but to make it more feasible and make the story drive more, Tevin came up and did like we should just make him a ride share driver. But other than that, all the interactions were definitely real. Like 98% of the interactions in this movie were actual interactions that I had with real people in real life. So, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question correctly. No, uh, yeah, it answers a ton of them. In fact, it makes me think about one of the um, things mentioned in the film about a uh, stand-up gig in a metro train, actually. Um, <laughs> I had a couple uh, of those. Uh, and, uh, but um, also, um, jumping off of that, I do want to talk about... Um, the transition uh, between a uh, stand-up comedian and director, like what is that transition like for you? Is it just simple as like, oh, I just want to tell my story. Here's um, the way I can do it or something else entirely. That's a great question, uh, Austin. As a stand-up comic, I say it's the hardest art form because as a stand-up comic, you're the actor, you're the director, you're the producer and a writer all at one time. You have to coach yourself. You have to understand what the crowd don't like, what they dislike. You have to redirect yourself. So I already had a sense of direction because I started off as a stand-up comic because as a comic, you, you're you all those things at one. You got to re, rewrite your own jokes. You have to produce your own show. You have to direct yourself. You have to perform. So I already had a sense of direction in that from that perspective, but I've always had a sense of direction in life because I always move. I always move with love. So for me, the transition wasn't super hard because when I was on sets, I'm always watching. I'm not very great at a lot of things, but my great one of my greatest gifts is observation. So once I start off as a stand-up comic, I start transitioning to an actor. Anytime I was on set, I would be watching directors. I try, I ask them questions, I listen to what they're saying. So I'm always watching. And I say, you know what? I gotta, I always knew I had a unique voice anyway. So I'm like, let me test the waters myself. So I didn't like the roles I was going out for. So I was like, fuck it. I'm gonna try to write my own roles in. I'm gonna produce my own thing. I was good at gathering resources. So everything just came because of where I came from physically and mentally. So it's like, for me, it wasn't a hard transition because like, I already knew as a comic, I could redirect myself. I could re. So yeah. So for me, it wasn't hard. Is it an arduous task? Yeah. Is it a fun task? Hell yeah. I love directing. I love producing. I love writing. I love acting. So I love, I love all those things together. So for me, when, I, when you say a hard task, I'm like, no, it, you you have to be a little more scrupulous. I'm not the most scrupulous person in real life, but when it comes to film, I am. I, I, I go super hard with that. So, um, no, it wasn't that hard. I mean, it's fun. I enjoy the process thoroughly. I, yeah, I get that. It, um, yeah. yeah, because it's like, I found myself when watching the movie kind of relating to it because, um, you know, when you're, uh, you know, a founder or whatever, you have to take on all that stuff. You know, you, you talk, uh, Tebin about uh, being your own marketing team and uh, getting distribution and doing all these things and it's like yeah I'm I'm the uh, editor in chief I'm the graphic designer I'm the SEO guy you yeah. know so you're you're talking my language uh, yeah. but um, but yeah Austin have you read this book called Rebel Without a Crew No but I'll add it to my uh, list I'll I'll see if I can get it at the library. Definitely read that book. It's by Robert Rodriguez. It's his story when, but that's who Tevin was on set. He he was our gaffer, our sound guy, co-director, and um, swing guy too. This is gripping. So we we had he had a plethora of jobs to do on set. So and Robert Rodriguez, the movie he made, I think it's called El Mariachi. Mm -hmm. But they got this picture of him. He got a boom mic hooked to his back. He got a camera right here. He got one of the lights in his other hand. And I thought it was such a brilliant. That's one of the books that inspired me to just say, man. Fuck it. I'm going to do it. Can I curse? Yeah, you could do okay. whatever you want. Hey, don't tell me that. I know I have a good time. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, um, but yeah, no, no restrictions here. I'm not uh, one of those. Uh, I always think it's weird when people like bleep uh, interviews and like YouTube. Oh, it's just like, eh, it, I know that somebody just cursed, so you're just drawing attention to it. So, but um, 
speaking of, I, 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 I um, so you guys have got a, uh, you're, you're releasing this week, September 6th, and you said at the Lamel, um, and I, man, I, I really hope people see it, uh, just for, I think it's a good statement on, I think, where, how experimental art, um, film has been this year, and I don't, I, I, and I say that because I'm like, I, I, I think, you know, I was watching Inside Out 2 a few weeks ago, and I'm like, it's a good movie. It's a great movie. But you're, I'm writing that review, and I'm like, uh, I'm writing about a franchise film. You know, people have already made their opinion on this film, so come on, guys. Um, but I, I love when films can get experimental about, you know, we were talking earlier about the hybrid of um, filmmaking, you know, documentary and um, kind of fictionalized storytelling, those two uh, genres, or as you would say, genreless, um, is some of my favorite stuff. You know, I, you know, I watched a documentary a couple of days ago about a, a river otter uh, and a guy from Shetland who uh, it, it's on Disney Plus called uh, Billy and Molly and otter love story or something like that and it was probably one of the best films i watched this year because of just how much it's not concerned without being any kind of thing it's just hey, i'm telling the story and now we're now we're done but i really do hope people see it um this weekend um i'll have a review up um for those watching or listening i'll have a review up this week um on either uh well both on my patreon and publicly um but yeah, um, Rashid, uh, Tevin, it, it was a pleasure to interview you both. Um, I, I wish you nothing but uh, success. All right, thank, thank you. you.